Welcome back to Harbaugh. Three years ago, Army Major General Antonia Takuba was tasked with investigating the abuse of Iraqi detainees at Abu Ghraib. His report and his testimony on Capitol Hill was at odds with the Pentagon civilian leadership, surprisingly. And now he says he was told to retire after 34 years of service. Did General Taguba's investigation into the Abu Ghraib scandal end his military career? And did former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld and his inner circle prevent Taguba from looking further up the chain of command? Seymour Hersh interviewed General Taguba in this week's New Yorker magazine. Well, what's the, what's the answer to that question? Oh, yeah. Is yeah. smash for telling the truth? Oh, uh, sure. What else? You, you, always, you always go after the messenger, shoot the messenger, which is his words. Yes, he got smashed for telling the truth. He's a, just one of those wonderfully honest, straight guys who he came, he was born in the Philippines when I came out of a small college in Idaho as a second lieutenant, made, it, made his way to two-star deputy commander for force structure in, uh, in uh, Kuwait when the war is on, and he gets tabbed just by chance, not by any accident. He's got a, you know, he's, he's there. They need a two-star general. Let's do the investigation. He's gone from nothing to two-star doing it right, so he does it right again. And, and he decides, and he discovers what about Abu Ghraib that the higher-ups, the civilians didn't like? He discovers a couple of things. He's prevented from looking beyond anything. He has grave suspicions that these bunch of kids didn't invent this kind of craziness. Yeah. Well, nobody watching this show thought those non-coms and, and the grunts did all that stuff. They didn't have a, you know, they weren't creative writers. They didn't make up, they didn't bring the dog collars with them from, from West Virginia. They, they saw that stuff when they got there and they saw other people doing it, obviously. Well, obviously, and you know, in the, in the military, there's a phrase, it's called one size fits all. Whatever you do in the special force uh, prison, you know, the special force prisons we have going in the CA prisons right. are very rough. Whatever you do, okay. it might Let me be. ask you the question. Why did all those guys, and I'm not defending their behavior because we saw it, they were stacking these guys up like hot dogs and humiliating them, and by the way, doing it on international television because those pictures went everywhere, driving more people to be suicide attackers of us. Who was given him the lead to do this kind of stuff? What have you found out? What, did Guba, what, what was the he Guba about to find out? What Taguba found out was that there was a major change in policy the previous fall. They brought in the general who ran Guantanamo, a guy named Miller, Jeff Miller. Mm -hmm. They brought him in. But the insurgency was beginning. This is the fall of 03. They brought him in from Gitmo. They brought him in from Gitmo. Because he was doing it tough there. He was doing it very tough there and doing what, what the big boys wanted done. You know, he was getting calls from, right. uh, from the boys in Washington and, and carrying out their orders. They brought him there to, to bring what they call strategic interrogation into the MPs at Abu Ghraib. Most of the MPs were, were trained to be traffic cops. They were reservists from West Virginia, Virginia. They were going to teach these guys how to integrate. The MP's job is to run a prison. And they, they were there to soften them up. They were there to work with the intelligence people who were doing the interrogation. Right. And Army regulations are really clean on this. MPs run prisons. They don't do okay, interrogation. Okay, what did humiliation of prisoners, treating these people like dogs, why did, how did that help the interrogation? <laughs> as far as I could tell, no way. You know, as as Taguba says often, he said, all these tactics we use and we're still using in the world, uh, uh, where are we? Are we winning? Yeah, but what was the intention? The intention was that they thought perhaps that they would find people who could either were in the insurgency, who would blab about it, or people they could turn around and send into the insurgency to be sort of double agents for us. We were desperate to get into the insurgency. They blew up the UN. They blew up the Jordanian embassy. It was a year before a presidential election. Don't forget, they were very worried about 04. And so here in the fall of 03, it isn't going so great. So this guy comes and he's going to, let's toughen it up. Let's start whacking these people around. Let, let them do what they Who's want. Whose idea? At the, at the Pentagon. Was this Cambone's idea? Was it higher up than him? Well, was it, was yeah. it Fife? Was it, who were the usual suspects well, here? The usual suspect is, is Rummy, Cheney, and the president. Right. Come on, who else? You know, they all have a story now, the story that goes now, Rummy's story, then this would, this would really drove Taguba up the wall. Rummy goes and testifies in May 7th before, you know, he's sworn right. testimony before the House Senate Armed Services Committee and later to the House Armed Services Committee. If I'd only known. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I just saw these pictures the okay, other week. bottom line, are we ever going to be able to chase trace this up the chain of command and beyond the people like that woman general that got nailed on this thing. Are we going to get any further than uh, her? I think Levin, who's now chairman of the Senate Armed <laughs> Services Committee, I know he has a bunch of guys that are competent, really beginning to look at stuff, and maybe this will be an incentive. Okay, why did they intimidate the Don Comps and the enlisted people to take, to basically pl uh, plead, plead out here? What choice do they have? Intimidate them all you have They have lousy lawyers? No, they had pretty good lawyers. What are you going to do? You, you know, you, well, you who, did it. Uh, why did they did it? I mean, they did dumb stuff. Yeah, but didn't they? Couldn't they say they they, they saw the higher ups do it? That they saw it being done weekdays and no, they did it at night? It doesn't matter what they say. They did it. They did bad stuff and they were caught and they were caught on and film. And they're facing 20 years, so they pled to three or something. Well, like that. they were on, on film. The, the only question. I understand. Is, you, yeah. Okay.
Yeah. It's bad news for our country, that Abu Ghraib thing, wasn't it? It was bad news for our attempt to try to demolify the Middle East and to try to win over whatever support we can in that part of the world, isn't it? And it's bad news that we still haven't come face to face with what we did and who's responsible. Let me say one thing to you. The President of the United States was told about Abu Ghraib very early, and what did he do about it? Did he say to Rumsfeld, I want some general's heads to roll? I want to clean up detainee practices? We can't do this. We can't have these kind of pictures going around. He did nada. And so what happens in the military chain of command when the President of the United United States, they know he's been briefed on it. Rumby's been briefed on it. Nobody's doing anything. You know, to investigate okay. seriously detainee abuse is the end of your career. You know, I wonder when these. I wonder where we're going to take care of all these people. Rumsfeld walks. Uh, R R Wolfowitz gets knocked out of the World Bank. His little hiding place over there. He's knocked out there. Fife can't get lunch with anybody. At Georgetown, the faculty club won't hang out with him. When are these all these guys going to come? Make maybe put him in front of us and make him answer for this thing. Is it ever hey, going to happen? Listen, you know. And we, Rummy and Cheney and all these guys. You know, well, Cheney's still there. I shouldn't say that. He's still in power. I got to be respectful, but the fact is, it seems to me all these these guys with their nutty ideas that got us in this war, and the poor soldiers are paying for it every day over there. They got to live with their own thoughts too. I'm afraid they're too comfortable with them. I think they're still dreaming. They're cooking up Iran for us now. Is what I think's coming, and you know that's coming, right? Because you just told me before we went on. No, the I didn't say it was coming. I just say they haven't given up on very detailed planning. Very, very detailed. To go to Iran, boy, with more firepower. I mean, down, to, down the nickel and nickel and drive nuts. You know, they, they've got to. They've got to go. The boys on. that brought us Iraq, Iran. Take it out. I love that phrase, take it out, like it's something they read somewhere. They've never well, been in a schoolyard fight, and they talk with such abandon about warfare and death. Anyway, thank you, Seymour Hirsch. Once again, another breakthrough story. It's in The New Yorker.